Welcome to N8N Cloud. In this series of videos, we'll teach you the basics of workflow design in N8N. I'm starting out here on my N8N Cloud dashboard, and the first step is to open our instance. Now, when you open your instance, you always open onto a blank canvas. This is the editor canvas here where we can build out workflows. And on the left-hand side, we can access existing workflows, save our workflow, and then also access our credential manager where you can add your logins for the various apps and services that you use, as well as an execution log to check out previous executions when you're troubleshooting. And then on the right-hand side is where we add nodes. Um, whenever you open up on a blank canvas, we always start with a start node here. And this is an example of a trigger node in NNN. So trigger nodes kick off workflows. Now the start node is special in that it can't be deleted and it's most useful when you're creating your workflow because any nodes you have connected to it, you can just click this execute workflow button to start those off. Now in this example, we're going to add the Slack node from this right hand panel. It's a regular node that we want to add because we're not waiting for something to happen in the Slack ecosystem to start our workflow. We instead just want to set it up to send a message to a channel. So we'll click on the Slack node here. The first thing I'm going to do is close this just to show how we connect them to a trigger node. So in this case, I'm grabbing this and, and connecting it here. So now, once I set up the Slack node and hit Execute Workflow, our start trigger will simply start. It won't create any data or bring anything in from a third-party app. And then our Slack node will run here. So the first thing we do to set up a node is the credentials for it. So we need to know what account to log into. For most nodes, there's various authentication types. In the case of Slack, we have the access token, which is an API token, or OAuth2. Now, I do recommend trying OAuth2 when you're using a node um, because most of the time in N8N Cloud, this is going to mean a click pop-up experience where you can easily sign in. So now that I've selected OAuth2, I can click this drop down and create a new credential here. We're going to give the credential a name. I usually go with the email that the account is for, so it's easy to reference later. And then from there, we're going to click this connection button here, which opens up the Slack pop-up. We're going to allow access. <clears throat> and now we're connected. Now, this nodes with access here is useful when you're connecting something like a Google credential and you want to control the access between nodes. In this case, we just need the Slack to have access to this and we'll save it. Um, once you've set up the credentials on a node, the rest of the setup is really you're setting up what the step that that node is going to do. And that's usually a combination of selecting the resource and the operation you want to apply on that resource. So by resource, <clears throat> we mean objects in the Slack system. So in this case, we could manipulate a channel, a file, a message, etc. We do want to post a message, so we'll click that. And then the operation here that we'd like to do is to post the message, not update it. Now, the channel that we'll post to will be general. And the text that we want to post, um, in this case, we'll do a static message for now. This is a message. So now that we've added a message, let's test out that we've set up this node correctly. And we can do that by clicking this execute node button here. So we've gotten a response back from Slack. Let's check over here in the channel. Just sent this as a message, and that's the text that we sent, so that seems to be working. We can see it in a tabular format, and then also in the raw JSON format that came back from the Slack API. <clears throat> so in this case, the node's set up and working correctly. If we close it now, we could execute the entire workflow, which in this case is the same as clicking this execute node workflow since we've really only got one node after the start node. But we see that, okay, it fired again. Um, so that's the basics of setting up a node and connecting it to a trigger. In the next tutorial, we're going to add a GitHub trigger and use expressions to reference data that we pull in from GitHub to post a dynamic message in Slack.